what's going on? It's Dr. Gon's World Boogie here again with another uh, top five video. This is going to be my top five uh, Stephen King films. And um, I've been a Stephen King fan for a while. Back in high school, I used to collect his books. I had a bunch of them. And um, now I, you know, just collect his uh, movies. I don't really uh, buy too many of his books anymore or read them anymore. Um, and um, I actually don't have too many Stephen King movies on DVD. But, um... I uh, went through my collection and my VHS collection. I picked out the ones that I thought were my top five, the ones that I go to the most to watch. But um, Stephen King has always been one of those guys who, um, like, uh, who I've always thought was cool. Like his books, I always thought were cool, and the adaptions of his movies are always cool. And um, like, I live kind of next to where Stephen King lives. Stephen King lives in Maine, and I live in Connecticut. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that you, you know, you hear about Stephen King all the time because you live around where he lives, you know, you always hear people saying like, you know, um, you know, I've seen his house or, you know, I've seen him walking around or something like that. So it's just cool to know that, you know, there's like, uh, you know, someone that famous who writes awesome books that lives close by, you know, he's going to be remembered as one of the best authors of our time, um, so, you know, it's just, it's cool to know that he lives close by and, um, you know, a lot of his stories take place in this area. So, you know, I can relate to that too. And, um, he's just, you know, Stephen King's cool. So, um, you know, I figured I'd do a top five list. It's also around Halloween time. So, uh, I just thought a great time to do, well um, a Stephen King list because, um, you know, Stephen King is just all about the Halloween and horror stuff. So it's just great. So... I'll just dig in and start um, going. My um, top five pick is um, Tales from the Dark Side the movie. And um, Stephen King actually only wrote one skit for this. And it was a skit that they were going to use in Creepshow 2 called, um, I think, uh, The Black Cat or something like that. Um, what's the name of it here? I just got to look it up real quick. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, um, Cat from Hell. Cat from Hell. I don't know why I thought Black Cat. I guess there's so many movies called Black Cat. I just thought. But it's Cat from Hell. And it was a skit that they were going to use on Creepshow 2. But then Creepshow 2 got cut down to only three skits. So that one got left over. So they ended up making it for the Tales from the Dark Side of the movie. And um, I just love this. Not only as a Stephen King thing. But I love the show Tales from the Dark Side. It's like one of my favorite TV shows. I like it more than um, Tales from the Crypt. And uh, more than Twilight Zone, it's it's like my favorite out of those anthology shows. And um, this movie also has uh, Debbie Harry starring in it, and she's one of my favorite um, singers and um, actresses. So um, that's another reason I love this movie, and they uh, put her name um, first, which I thought was cool, Debbie Harry. And um, this is just a really fun movie. It's uh, three skits, um, the Cat from Hell one. Is the one that um, Stephen King wrote. George A. Romero actually um, adapted it to screenplay. So um, George A. Romero rewrote Stephen King's story into um, this skit, and it's um, actually the best skit in the movie. It's about this um, mafia guy who's kind of hired as a hitman to kill this cat, and you know, at the beginning he takes it as a joke, but as he goes on, he realizes that this is no joke that this cat is serious business and um it's almost impossible to kill this cat and the guy who owns the cat has had like bad luck with the cat he also is like a rich um guy who made some type of drug um you know like a pharmacy type drug and um it's just it's a really good skit and um definitely the best in it but the other skits are good in this too um there's one with a mummy in it that's steve buscemi in it and um, he's uh, always good in everything he does, and uh, he uh, kind of plays like a smart, like a smart ass, um, really smart kid who just, um, you know, knows how knows about all this like ancient history stuff, and um, it takes place in like a college, like campus, something like that. And then the last skit is um, it's got this huge um, monster in it, and uh, it's about this guy who like falls in love with this like uh, girl. And then there's a twist at the end. Uh, I don't really want to spoil for anyone, but I kind of already did. So, um, yeah, just uh, Tales from the Dark Side, definitely awesome. And um, one of my favorite things that has, like, Stephen King's name on it. Because he also wrote 
some of the stories that uh, became uh, some of the stories in the show too were based off Stephen King's stories. I think a couple of them were, and um, just uh, just good stuff. I just love Tales from the Dark Side. All right, and my number four pick is um, Cat's Eye, and this is another um, anthology. This um, this one also has three skits. And um, all of them are written by Stephen King, so this is um, this is like a full pledged like Stephen King uh, thing, kind of like Creep Show. Just every skit is based off of a Stephen King thing, and um, Stephen King actually wrote the screenplay, so that's um, cool. And um, this is just an awesome, awesome thing. There's one skit um, about this um, little monster guy, and it has um, it has um, what's her name in it? Drew Barrymore. Uh, when she was younger, back in her, uh, like, E.T. days, and, um, it's, um, pretty good, and there's another skit with James Woods, um, about, uh, kind of, like, um, trying to quit smoking, and it's, uh, very re reminiscent to, like, a Tales from the Dark Side, um, episode, and, um, it's just really good, and, um, I really like this one, um, I would recommend it to anybody who, uh, likes horror anthologies, or anybody that's like a anybody who just likes a good like uh, fun '80s uh, movie that uh, Stephen King wrote. I mean, this is a good Stephen King movie and um, a good uh, horror anthology. I actually need to pick this up on uh, DVD, but I like the VHS cover uh, more than I like the DVD cover. So you know, I figured not in a big rush to pick that up on um, DVD because um, the VHS works fine. All right, and my number three pick is um, The Dead Zone, and um, I love this movie. Um, for some reason, it just really works for me. Um, Christopher Walken, in my opinion, does a great job in this. This is my favorite Christopher Walken, like, serious role, and um, he really does a good job in this. And uh, Martin Sheen is in this movie. He plays, like, um, like a politician who's running for um, president. And, um, he does a really good job as the politician. Like, he's, he's, like, so evil, and so, and he just does a really good job at it. And the main cop in this movie is, um, cool, too. He, he, uh, befriends Christopher Walken's character, and they kind of, uh, uh, like, work together. Because this movie, like, starts out with Christopher Walken's character kind of gets into a car accident. And, um, he's in a coma for, like, um, so many years, um, five years. And, um when he gets out um he has like special powers he can if he touch if he holds on to your hand or like touches you he can like uh see into your future or um see an event that might happen in your future so um it kind of just starts off with him coping with all this crap like you know he's been gone for five years his uh girlfriend left him he doesn't have a job anymore he uh, needs to learn how to walk again so the first movie is just kind of the first part of the movie is just kind of him like coping with um the accident but as the movie goes on the whole it like totally switches um its plot which is is one of the reasons i love it and um he's um like he shakes the hand of the politician and he sees like um a vision of the politician um like setting a doomsday bomb to like uh blow up the whole world you know he's like if you're gonna be remembered you know when i'll be remembered uh, you know and blowing up the whole world or whatever it's like a crazy part of the movie kind of like it, it's more suggested um it's not really ex like explained too well like what's going on with the politician like you know he's uh he's uh like he's gonna nuke or blow up um another like um country and it's just gonna like you know so it's just crazy and um so Christopher Walken's character kind of goes like taxi driver status where he grabs like a rifle and goes out to kill this guy because he knows no one's gonna believe him he knows um, that he's just going to get, like, uh, people are going to think he's crazy. So he, he knows what's going to happen. So um, he goes, like, on his own to do this. And it, I just think it's really intense. Um, and um, I love this movie. Um, and it's directed by David Cronenberg, who's one of my favorite um, directors. And um, I really love Cronenberg's work. And... Uh, this is just um, one of, another one of like another great film. Like when I watch a Cronenberg movie, I always just get drawn right in, and um, 
and this is another one that's like that. The second I start watching, I get drawn into the story. The characters are believable, and um, everything like that. And I just, um, you know, I get drawn right in, and um, I don't want to, uh, you know, leave until the movie is completely over. Just, um, just really good in my opinion. And I never read the book. The Dead Zone, but after being such a big fan of this movie now, it's one of my favorite Stephen King movies, um, I feel like I should read the book, because uh, it just seems like it would probably be cool, and maybe it would explain uh, certain parts a little bit more. Alright, and uh, my number two pick is actually um, two movies, Creepshow and Creepshow 2. I couldn't pick one of these, and if I put both of them on the list, I would have to switch it to a top ten list. And um, I really didn't feel like doing a top 10 list for Stephen King right now. I just, I don't really own that many Stephen King movies on DVD. So I figure the, one I, the ones I do own on DVD, I mean, they're my favorites just because I own them over the rest. So um, I just, um, so I just threw these both in as number two because they're both just awesome. Creepshow, the first one, has five skits, and they're all just awesome. Based on EC Comics stories, um, written by um, Stephen King. Actually, I'm not sure if they're based on EC Comics stories. Maybe this one might be. This one, I don't, I don't remember. Um, Creepshow 2 might just be, like, a more original, like, Stephen King stories. But these are, like, heavily inspired and influenced off the EC Comics, like, Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror from the 50s and 60s. And uh, these movies are just awesome. And um, pretty, and some of my just favorite Romero films, some of my favorite uh, Stephen King things, obviously number two on my list. And um, I just, I just love these. I love every skit in these movies, and I love them. This one is a little bit more like cheesy and fun than um, the first one. And the first one it has a little bit more of like a serious um, tone to it, but it's it's more like colorful, and they play more on the like design qualities of the EC Comics, the color schemes and stuff like that. They use more, they take advantage of that in the first Creep Show, and um, really um, like uh, bring it into the movie and it gives it that like comic book feeling. And um, the second one, like the in-between skit is like a cartoon. So like it's the, this one's a little bit more like cheesy and I would say like um, maybe like uh, intended for like younger kids but then a lot of the skits are violent and crazy so I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what audience they were going for with this movie but it's really fun and um, I love the rap skit and the hitchhiker one is crazy. The hitchhiker guy that's one of my biggest kind of like fears of like having a ghost or like a some, or like a ghoul like um following you on the road and um even though the lady in the skit definitely deserves it it's still a really spooky skit i just i don't like that idea of having like a ghost you know following you when you're driving a car or something like that or like appearing in your back seat or something like that it's just like scary and then the raft is just classic and um this is just a, a great great horror anthology creep show one and two are probably my two favorite horror anthology things ever. Like, I like them more than those horror anthology shows. They're just the best. I love these movies. And this one has some great skits in it, too. Um, the best one is uh, The Crate, in my opinion, which has this, like, um, ancient monster that um, has been stuck inside this crate for, like, um, I, I think, like, since, like, the, the 20s or 30s. I forget how the story goes exactly. But um, it's just great. And um, it's just completely awesome, and all based on Stephen King stories, and um, I just uh, just love it. And then my number one pick is um, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, and uh, this is just has to be, in my opinion, um, the best Stephen King adaption. I mean, I know that Stephen King himself isn't the biggest fan of this adaption because Stanley Kubrick really. Um, when he makes a film and bases it off a story, he takes liberties. Like, he is Stanley Kubrick, so he does what he wants. So he cuts out parts of the story that he didn't think were needed. He added his own parts. And um, in my opinion, the Stanley Kubrick version of the story, I like more. But I can understand Stephen King's argument. It's his book. 
you know, his ideas. Um, I've read that The Shining is kind of like, um, was like kind of based a little bit off of how he was feeling at the time, kind of like a, almost like a little self biography because he was like heavily into uh, like el drinking alcohol at the time and he wasn't doing too good. And, um, and I guess um, that um, helped influence him write the character, um, Jack Torrance. So, um, you know, Stanley, um, I can see how um, Stephen King felt a little, um, like, um, you know, like, used. Like, Stanley Kubrick, like, took his idea and just made it his own. But um, I've also read in, um, there is um, a quote in um, one of Stephen King's books that said that The Shining was one of his favorite adaptions of one of his books. So, it's really mixed on exactly how Stephen King stands on this, but... I love it. I mean, it's definitely the most iconic Stephen King movie. I mean, when you think of Stephen King movies, you think of Jack Nicholson chopping down a door and saying, here's Johnny. You know, it's just, this is just so iconic. It's such an iconic horror movie in general. And um, I just love it. Stanley Kubrick is, um, if not my favorite director, um, one of my all-time favorite directors. Him and Ridley Scott are like my two favorite directors. And um, Stanley Kubrick just can do no wrong in my eyes. I know that is very biased to say, but um, all his movies, in my opinion, are um, masterpieces. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of the subject, like Barry Lyndon or whatever, um, they're just brilliantly made, and he spends so much time. And that's kind of one of Stephen King's arguments. He said that Stanley Kubrick thinks too much and doesn't put enough like heart into his movies, which, you know, I can understand and I can understand um, how they had their differences. They're both artists. They're both uh, creative minds, you know, who are opinionated and um, have their own ideas. And um, But in the long run, I just think um, Stephen King should be very proud that um, Stanley Kubrick adapted one of his books. I mean, Stanley Kubrick didn't make a lot of movies. He only made like eight, ten full-length films. And, um, you know, most of the stuff he picked was like um, older books. So, I mean, the, he had, like when The Shining came out, the movie, the book had just came out a couple of years before. So, it was like one of the only times um, Stanley Kubrick really did something like that, if I can think, if I can remember, that he adapted a book that was recently popular, that had like just come out and was popular. And um, he did, a, in my opinion, a great job. Like I said, almost every minute of that movie is, like, iconic. And I love the way Stanley Kubrick shoots his films, the cinematography, the, um, you know, long panning shots, just the way he builds up his movies and the atmosphere and tone, just beautiful. And um, this has just always been my favorite Stephen King movie, and it's always been one of my favorite horror movies in general. I had this movie on DVD before I was even a Stanley Kubrick fan, and now Stanley Kubrick's one of my favorite directors. I mean, um, it's just, it's always been a movie I've liked. So, um, that was my top five Stephen King list. Um, and, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, if you have your own opinions on what you think are Stephen King's top five best movies or even stories, feel free to post them in a comment below or, uh, you know, whatnot. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. One more kid